I want to thank this FC College and TEDx FC team for organizing this event and bringing us great stories. <clears throat> As you know, uh, I am an artist, a painter, and a car cartoonist. And it's really very uh, easy to be a cartoonist in, in this part of the world, uh, and especially in Pakistan, uh, <clears throat> because our politicians and military and religious leaders, they are actually quite, they are quite helpful in providing ideas and subjects for the cartooning. And a lot of people actually complain that uh, our leaders have done nothing for them, but we don't have any complaints because they are working for the cartoonists. And in fact, some politicians work exclusively for the cartoonists. <laughs> So, uh, about me, uh, I was born in a small city, Kohat, that's near Peshawar. And it was my father who actually introduced me to drawing and painting. Uh, he thought, you know, that would keep me busy and I won't bother him. <clears throat> but he didn't realize that uh, one day it will become my profession and it was kind of sealing my fate. <coughs> So uh, when I was in uh, Edwards College, Peshawar, and I was doing BSc with double maths and physics, and I was drawing actually the portraits of my professors instead of taking notes. And um, uh, one day actually, uh, I, was, I was living in a hostel, and we actually bunked our evening you know, uh, studies, and we went to see a movie. And when we came back, our warden English professor, Kalim Khan, who came to my room, and when he saw my paintings, he said, oh, so you are an artist. So you must have some freedom. And he asked my other friends to you know, complete two circles of hockey crown. And I was surprised that uh, the paintings and my work could have such an impact and that he would let me go. I mean, that was really a blatant violation of rules. But he actually uh, secretly uh, called my father and asked him to send me to National College of Arts. Uh, since I was studying maths and had good drawing, I was easily selected to NCA and architecture department. And that was the time, you know, the 80s, uh, when college campuses were really political charged and there were a lot of, that was the last period of, you can say, Zeol Haq. <clears throat> and so we were also involved in a semi-political, semi-cultural activities. And at that time, I realized, uh, after third year of architecture, I realized that uh, calculating mortar and brick and, you know, this uh, concrete is a too mechanical job. And uh, I wanted something to, where I can have uh, artistic freedom and creativity. So well, it was really very difficult, but I left architecture and joined fine arts. Uh, as I was actually earning a lot of money by architecture, being an architecture student, so my father was really very uh, upset and was disappointed that I'm leaving a very good uh, profession. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I uh, didn't need actually financial support from my father, but I think he was, he kept uh, helping me in secret ways. So that was really uh, important to be. And actually my father thought that the artists actually dig their graves with brushes and pencils. And he was worried that I would end up on streets like a beggar, you know, if you remember Sagar Sadiqi. So uh, he came here because he was diagnosed with cancer and he wanted, you know, uh, a secure future, so he wanted to buy some property for me because he still believed that I would end up on streets. <clears throat> that's the painting, uh, that's, these are the sculptures you must have seen at D DHA in defense. I usually show these uh, sculptures because a lot of people think that cartoonists don't have a very good drawing because after all they just make distorted drawings, you know, uh, and you don't need skill. <clears throat> But I call myself as accidental cartoonist. Uh, 
my friend and roommate, Liaquat Ali, he's a very gifted cartoonist. He was working for the Friday Times. And he got a very good job at the news and with a very good salary. So he asked me to fill his place for one month so that if he doesn't like the new place, he can come back and take his old job. Actually, he didn't come back. <laughs> so my editor, he was very happy with my work because I could do watercolors. And he gave me a raise and asked me to do a front page cartoon for the Friday Times. That was probably the first time uh, cartoons were being printed on the front page. And I was only the first one to do the color cartoons. <clears throat> so, I mean, uh, we are not actually uh, good, uh, you can say, good with words. Because we speak and we, uh, we express ourselves in images. And images have a totally a different structure, totally a different way of visualizing. I mean, if you see an article, you will see an intro, then a body of, you know, logical, sequential arguments, and then the conclusion and maybe a few suggestions. So you start from one line to another line, from small piece to the bigger picture. <clears throat> but in a, uh, in a painting or in a visual, you see the whole picture first together, and then you go into the smaller parts. So it's all together, you know, a different a format of expressing yourself. <clears throat> That's my uh, favorite uh, picture. Uh, I, that's, uh, this painting was made by a Belgian uh, artist, René Magritte, in 19... 28, 29, and the lower line actually is in French, and that says, this is not a pipe. And uh, if you understand this image, you will understand, I think, half of the modern art and the cartooning. So actually, the artist here is saying that, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's not an actual pipe. You cannot fill it with tobacco and smoke it. It's actually a canvas or a paper. So I mean, the reality of that painting is a flat surface. And that is just a mental image. I mean, there is no pipe on this painting. So what he's saying is that that's our mental image of a pipe, whereas there is no actual pipe on this painting. So if you see, the modern art is actually concerned with how you perceive the world and how to challenge it and to give you a new perception of the world. So I mean, the Marguerite is saying also that what you see and often see as reality is not actually reality, but an illusion of reality. And that's what the cartoonists do. We challenge the mental perception of reality of our readers and give them a new vision, a new way of looking at things. And it's quite very simple <clears throat> how cartoonists visualize subjects, because there's a lot of myth and you know, uh, mystery surrounded the, uh, the creativity or the cartoons. And usually people think that you know, it's, it must be a very uh, complicated uh, uh, method. But I tell you, it's very simple. It's so simple, you won't believe. I mean, what we do is that we combine two different contradictory, incongruent, uh, contrasting elements together. And the, the viewer actually sees the link between them. And that actually produces laughter. I mean, if you see the, the structure of any joke, you will see the contrasting elements together. So here, I mean, you must remember the two, 2014 the World Cup fever. So, I mean, the satellites, moon, everything revolves around the Earth. I just made it revolve around this brazooka. And secondly, we deal with symbols and totems. And you, you all, all know that uh, in medieval times, there were uh, totems that were actually this uh, identity of different tribes uh, especially in America. So there was an animal that was a totem of that tribe, 
and they thought that they are the, uh, the that is their ancestral you know symbol so in in a modern world we also have these totems like this uh, flag people identify with them they it's kind of their identity and their strong you know emotions uh, connected with that image or totem or symbol <clears throat> So here I use that uh, flag as a symbol of Pakistan where uh, in 2012 there were a lot of attacks on Christians, on uh, a forced conversion of Hindus and of course uh, the killing of Shias attacks. <clears throat> so I made that the shrinking of the space for the minorities in Pakistan. Uh, this cartoon was done by Daryl Kegel, he's an American cartoonist. Uh, they were uh, drug wars going on in Mexico, so uh, there is an eagle be, uh, in white. So he made actually the bullet holes that killed. So there were a lot of actually protests against Daryl Cagle within Mexico, and the embassies actually <clears throat> protested against this because they thought that it's insulting the, the Mexican total nation and the Mexican identity. So you see, there is a strong reaction against when you turn these images around there is always a very strong reaction because people identify with those images with those totems and that's why i think uh, cartooning is always called uh, the art of controversy because it always creates a controversy and that's also a problem you know a lot of times i'm really afraid that what i think is a very simple cartoon and that tomorrow you will see you know the floods of emails and the letters and the call from the mobile, oh partner, So also we use, I mean, the different symbols uh, from Western symbolism, that's a very famous painting of Delacre uh, on French Revolution. And there are hundreds of variations of this uh, painting, even just now when there was attack in Paris, they were, again, this image resurfaced in a different way. And that's how uh, I used uh, this image uh, on the assassination of Benazir Bhutto. Also, we use, you know, like Egyptian symbols. Uh, there's a, a famous uh, uh, painting from the tomb of, I think, one of the pharaohs when uh, Assisi toppled the Morsi's elected government in Egypt. <clears throat> that's a 1993. Uh, and also use, you know, the film, uh, different. And you must have seen the film Raiders of the Last Ark. <clears throat> so that was the time when uh, Ishaq Khan was overthrowing, you know, dismissing the political governments of Nawaz Sharif and Benazir. And that was happening, actually. It was like a musical chairs. Uh, one PM came for just two years, and then he was dismissed, and another came. And there was a trika, this... Uh, Ulam Ishaq Khan and uh, Aslam Beg. <clears throat> That's uh, 1999. At that time, my editor was in jail, and I was really afraid that I would be the next. <laughs> and there were a lot of letters and there were a lot of columns that you must teach lesson to this cartoonist because he, you know, insults our prime minister. And, you know, uh, after maybe one week or ten days that government was overthrown, I was really relieved at that time. <laughs> uh, although I do not believe in military interventions, but I was really <laughs> glad. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, usually... You know, uh, after, whenever the, the 14th August approaches, everybody tries to, you know, paint the sayings of Jinnah according to their own political agendas. You know, it's kind of reinterpreting the past according to your own political needs. And secondly, you know, th that was also a challenge for me because there are a lot of subjects that are really banned in Pakistan and there are a lot of uh, strong reaction uh, uh, against those, for example, uh, the founding fathers, if you make a caricature, I think probably that was the first one that I tried to bring uh, Qaeda -e Azam into this uh, uh, cartoon. Yes, I actually mentioned about the political and the religious readers, but I, you know, uh, 
forgot about the bureaucrats because that was one notification from Punjab government that said that they will, uh, all the animals within Lahore will have a registration number, like our, uh, like motorcycles and cars. Oh, there's one you can see they applied for. So you know that's how they make our life easy, you know, the providing the ideas. So that, that's a, a 2005 uh, earthquake. There was a lot of, I mean, genuinely people were concerned and they really wanted to help. But they were disorganized, indisciplined, and we heard that there were, you know, miles of trucks and that relief goods could not be delivered to the people and they had to dump on the sides of the road. So, I mean, that was really a wasted effort. These were the PIMRA rules that actually happened uh, after Musharraf imposed emergency in 2007. And you must, uh, you know, I mean, the jargon in, in police stations, no number chitar, if you remember. So that's, you know, the nine number and 10 and 11, you know, for offenses like mine. And that's the 2009 and 2010 were really the, the uh, uh, I mean, they were, in 2009 and 10, there were more than 1,000 terrorist attacks within Pakistan. That was, I, I think, a very dark time. So, I mean, I made this cartoon that it's usually, if you see, there were only, I think, 2,000 or 3,000 Americans who were killed either in Afghanistan, but there were more than one lakh people, the local people who were killed in that. And same was with the politicians. They were actually fighting with each other for their gains. But uh, that's also 2009, and there were uh, attacks going on regularly in, within Pakistan. That's uh, the, the restoration of uh, judges' movement. <laughs> the, at that time, it was really very difficult to make a cartoon on judiciary. I mean, you could easily have, that's also a very strong area where you're always afraid because uh, that's so motto and um, so that was the time when uh, Chief Justice Iftikhar Chaudhary was dismissed after, you know, emergency, so I could make that. <laughs> That's uh, 2004 when, you know, there were these bomb blasts and it started within and everybody was saying that, no, you know, you must, you know, have political dialogues with them, talk to them. But over the years now, we realized that uh, it was just a, a delaying tactic. And they were actually all over within Pakistan. I mean, that was Iftikhar Chaudhary's statement when he said that, you know, uh, there was a ruling in Supreme Court and he thought that now the martial law, uh, the path to martial law is permanently blocked. And we all know that it just takes two jeeps and one truck. That's, you know, the conspiracy theories. We, uh, 2010 again, there were a lot of, as there were a lot of attacks within uh, uh, Pakistan, there were a lot of conspiracy theories. Blackwater is doing this, Roy is doing this, foreign hand, nobody can do this, they're not Muslims, etc., etc. <clears throat> that was when uh, there was, I think, a video appeared somewhere in, on YouTube, and they banned, you know, the YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and there were hundreds of uh, websites. I work for a website, kegel.com, and it's blocked in within Pakistan. Arab Spring, you must have known that that was actually all the powerful dictators were. <laughs> WikiLeaks, uh, I mean, uh, when I was presenting my work in uh, American and Canadian Cartoonists Association in San Francisco, and when I showed my work, nobody was actually laughing. Uh, they were all very serious. But when this cartoon came, they all started, you know, up because they could, you know, understand and realize uh, the meaning of uh, taking a leak. And <laughs> so, I mean, so uh, that's also one aspect because uh, the humor in the cartoons, they also have 
a cultural limitations. You know, there are certain ideas, certain symbols, uh, certain associations that can easily click to you, but would not uh, click to any other person. <clears throat> That's also a very taboo subject in Pakistan, you know, uh, criticizing the army, how everybody is uh, online uh, uh, whenever there is a, a line from the army or the intelligence agencies. <clears throat> That's also this uh, our role in war and terror. So it's quite very difficult, but these kind of cartoons, they can appear in some of the newspapers. And I, I would say that in English newspapers, there is a lot of freedom. And there is a distinction between Urdu and English papers. And you must have noticed that there are no actually editorial cartoons in Urdu papers. There is one that publishes its cartoon, but you will see that I, some day it's on the first page and then next day it's on the page five or the back page because that's just used as a filler. It's not recognized as a permanent element. We always have been asking for the nuclear technology for the peaceful purposes, for the energy, but we know that we are facing uh, gas shortages, uh, load shedding, and being a nuclear country, we still have this uh, energy issues. Yeah, that was the cartoon that nobody actually liked when I showed my work also, because that criticizes the Americans. But we now, it's realized that there are a lot of groups that were being supported, especially in Syria and, and uh, Libya, who eventually actually killed their own ambassador. So they were fighting against Al-Qaeda within Afghanistan, but they were supporting some groups against Assad. That's very, you know, <laughs> close to our heart, you know, and these days, that's what's going on. You must have seen the T20. Yeah. In Pakistan, usually the politicians are always, every blame is on the politicians, but nobody talks about the judges, uh, uh, and nobody talks about the army or even the, the bureaucracy and, you know, other elements. <clears throat> it's always... So, I mean, I showed you this... Uh, mm, the sequence, I mean, from 1993, I've been working for 25 hours, uh, 25 years, and in 2014, I went for a fellowship to uh, National Endowment for Democracy and uh, to write and research my book that would tell the story of uh, by history of Pakistan through my cartoons and images. So that would be kind of the first book that would not uh, be written by a head of a state who were actually written by ghost writers. So you will have a visual history. I mean, as we know that now there are novels that, uh, the graphic novels, now even there is um, um, graphic journalism. So I want to write, uh, completed a book, it's almost at the finishing stages, to have a visual history of political, uh, political history of Pakistan. I thank you very much.